Good morning everybody, welcome to Technique Tuesday. My name is Ali Board and I am broadcasting live from Down End Farm Studio. You are all very welcome. Now you might be watching live via Facebook, you might be on the Alison Seaboard Facebook page, you might also be over on the Mural Over Ballet School Facebook page. No matter how you are watching this morning, you're very, very welcome indeed. And I have a special guest with me today. I would like to introduce you to uh, Tina Marsh. She is the principal of Muralova Ballet School and we'll talk more about that in just a second and uh, she and I have known each other for a <coughs> number of years. We were just talking about it before we went live. We reckon it's about 30 years, don't yeah, we? Ish. Ish, <laughs> ish, ish, ish. So, uh, Tina, would you like to just say a quick hello of who you are? I know you're thrilled about this. You can tell from <laughs> Tina's face how thrilled she is about broadcasting live uh, on Facebook. But do you want to just say hello to people and uh, say who you are and why you're here today? Okay. Hi, everyone. It's me, Tina. So I run Mural Over Ballet School in Cove Hill. Um, I took over about five, six years ago from Sandra McAuliffe, um, who was my fabulous ballet teacher myself. So that's where we are at now. So shall we just talk uh, briefly? <laughs> I'm going to say hello. Anybody who's just popped up in the comments, um, I am just going. I will say hello to you in just a second. Um, but uh, shall we just talk briefly about Mural Over Ballet School and why you and I are so passionate about it and the kind of history about it? Okay. So how old is the school? Would you reckon it's eighty-ish years old? Mm -hmm. So founded by Madame Mur Muralova, who passed it on to Grace Greenway. They built up the school together, and then Grace took over. Um, who then carried on for X number of years and then Sandra McAuliffe took over and then passed down to me. So it always gets passed to a former pupil of the school. Yeah, and why is that important that it gets passed down to a former pupil, would you say? Um, just, just to keep the historical nature of it really, because it's quite a special school in that it's NATD, so that's the Russian style of ballet, which is um, not common in down here in the south anyway. <coughs> um, so it's just nice to have that history and of course we've all been taught in a special way by a very special person and it's nice to keep the tradition going. Yes, it absolutely is and I have to say it couldn't go to a better person than, than you, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Tina is top class uh, ballet teacher, absolutely has to be said and uh, has had the terrible misfortune of employing me for the last uh, couple <laughs> of years. Um, not that I particularly specialise in teaching the uh, lower part of the school, so the junior part of the school, the, the children, um, which is uh, Tina's forte, but I teach the adult part of the school where we had our adult classes last night, didn't we? We are actually back in the studio now, which is awesome <laughs> after um, having had a long, long time of having to do it on Zoom. So yes, we're back in the studio now and it's been amazing, hasn't it, being yeah. back in the studio. I've so appreciate being in the room oh my with goodness. people yeah so yeah it's made uh, such a difference for the children it? to be back with their friends doing yeah. what they love doing well and the same for the adults yeah, <laughs> yeah, <same> the adult. <laughs> yeah their little faces when they're <laughs> back in the room together yeah it is that thing so it is a very very special place i have had the honor of um growing up in that school as has tina um, Tina and I have danced together on many occasions, although obviously Tina went on to become a professional and uh, to be part of the school and to be teaching there again, has uh, you have no idea what that means to me. It's really very special indeed. Now, I want to say hello. So there's lots of people in the room uh, watching this morning and I think um, we've had some issues with Facebook again where the comments aren't showing up, which is just marvellous. So I'm flicking uh, in between screens at the moment. Um, so I'm going to say some good mornings to you because I uh, very much appreciate you tuning in. So who have we got? We have got Janet, Janice, Maureen, Liz, my mum is in the room Hi. this morning, <laughs> uh, lovely Dee, uh, Patricia, Lou, Linda. Now Linda is in America. Linda oh, is um, over in Atlanta. She uh, tunes in. <laughs> yes, very early in the morning for our Linda. Uh, Julie, Mary, uh, Martina, uh, Kathy. Well, how? Who else we got? Rabina in Carmarthenshire. Uh, who else we got? Um, oh, Lynn is saying hello, Miss Marsh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Rosemary. <laughs> Rosie is saying, hi, Ali and Tina. Reckon I've seen you before on paper. So <laughs> I think that's because Rosie may have seen the odd painting I've oh, done of you. I was in my the past. 
uh, B, uh, lots of people saying how much uh, they uh, enjoy the ballet. Linda P, Sandy, Janice. Um, Janice is saying good morning, both from Sunny Gavin and Stacey Land. Excellent. <laughs> uh, my mum is saying what a special school it is. Uh, who else we got? Linda D, uh, Chris. Ali D is in the room. Uh, who else we got? Gloria is in Spain. Uh, Anne, Chris, Jilly, uh, Sharon and Brenda. Thank you ever so much uh, for tuning in. It does look like Facebook is continuing to be a tricksy little number, which is very good of it, isn't it? It's always good when technology helps us out. <laughs> Oh, goodness me. But um, it's lovely to have you all here. And what we're going to do this morning is we're going to do a ballet themed demonstration for you. So I have taken a photograph of Tina and Tina might want to just describe this photograph because <laughs> um, we were having a look at, at it earlier. How old do we think this photograph is? We think this photograph is about five years old. <clears throat> and why do we know that it's five years old? <laughs> because at the time, I don't know how many months, but I was definitely in my last trimester of being pregnant with my son, Max. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yes, you looked at that photograph this morning, didn't you? And said, oh, I'm very pregnant. Now, to a, a lot of people, Tina probably doesn't look pregnant at all. <laughs> Um, but uh, yes, I do remember it because it was um, one of the last times you said you'd put a tutu on. Yes, ever. <laughs> <laughs> and probably a pair of point shoes as well. Yeah, definitely. Was that the last time you put a pair of point shoes on? Uh, maybe? No, I put them on recently for a little demo. Uh, oh, Very little. Did you? Very small <laughs> demo. Very small right, demo. okay. So that is the photograph that I'm going to be working uh, from today. And we've got a bit of a special demonstration for you because I'm going to share all sorts of possible new techniques with you today because there's good and bad news I wanted to do a big technique Tuesday and invited my lovely friend uh, to talk about art and ballet I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break from technique Tuesday just for a few weeks it's not for very long I will be back on the 13th of July so I thought what I would do is leave you with a real humdinger of a demonstration for you to be able to see so let's take you to that overhead camera and um, if I'm, I'm just going to shove my friend out of the way so that I can get into place and do the thing that I do. Right, some other people popping up. Um, who have we got else in the room? Linda R. Oh, and yes, people saying that uh, they can't see comments anymore. Anita, good morning, Anita. Sometimes I gather the comments are coming back up if you refresh your screen. So if you want to try that that might be something that makes all the comments come back up again. Um, but uh, I promise you that they are there. And even if you can't see them, it's much appreciated to have you in the room and commenting. Now, this is a piece of work that I experimented with just recently. So I uh, had a photograph that um, I was uh, I researched on one of the uh, royalty free websites and I popped onto a piece of music manuscript paper. Now I'm going to do a slightly different version of this today simply because there's an awful lot of copyright knowledge required when you're painting on music manuscript paper. And this isn't the time and place necessarily to be talking about that today. So what I've done is I've found you a much easier alternative. So this is what we're basing today's demonstration on, but I'm going to be doing it on this background. Now, let me describe for you how I got to this point in the proceedings. Like I said, finding a piece of music manuscript that is free from copyright requires quite a bit of research and I wanted to make it easier for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there is a company on Etsy for those of you that know it and I have put a link over on my blog page. You guys all know where to go, don't you? You know to go over to my website www alisonseaboard-fineart.co.uk and find my blog post. The link to this shop is there and it's a shop on Etsy called My Porch Prints and they deal with downloadable vintage ephemera. Now I've been through their copyright and as long as you pay for the download and it's not very expensive, uh, the music manuscript that I downloaded yesterday 
was uh, just under three pounds, I think it was. So it's a bit of a bargain. As long as you download it and alter it um, quite dramatically, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to paint a picture of Tina over the top of it. Then you're absolutely fine as far as copyright is concerned. What you can't do with it is download that image, print it out, and then sell it on, okay? So uh, that is what I've done. I downloaded that image. I um, put it onto my computer and then I printed it out onto paper. Now, I realise, I absolutely realise that not all of you are going to be able to do this, but you can print it out on anything and experiment with it. This piece of music manuscript is very, very flimsy indeed, and yet I still managed to do a painting on it. I primed it with a little bit of watercolour ground to get it to accept the uh, watercolour a bit better. So you could experiment, couldn't you? You could also print your download out onto normal copier paper and then you could collage it onto a piece of watercolour paper. So there's lots and lots of ways around this. Um, I've just noticed in the comments, um, Tina, that my mum is saying hello to your mum. <laughs> <laughs> so is they're having a chat. There? Well, apparently. Oh, my days. Well done, mum. <laughs> <laughs> Two mums chatting. is awesome. <laughs> They've known each other for a long time as well, haven't they? <laughs> Um, lots of people talking about ballet tickets as well that went live this well this morning, people booking stuff. Oh, so, good. like I said, over to Etsy or find the link in my blog to my porch prints and you can download this uh, same uh, piece of music manuscript. I then popped it into my printer. Steph is asking the question, can you use your downloaded music more than once? Yes, you absolutely can. Completely and utterly. You can use it as many times as you like. That's what makes it such a huge bargain. So I downloaded it and I put one of the pieces of the Hannah Mule bamboo paper. You've seen me uh, demonstrate it in the last couple of weeks. Another really good reason for um, people have said, what's the difference between the bamboo paper and the agave paper? And uh, I wanted to see if I could do an experiment with it to see if I could print on it. And I absolutely can. So I put it into my printer and printed it out. But like I said, you can do whatever version you like with it. Now, one thing that you do have to be aware of when you're using an inkjet printer to print out uh, collage materials or a background, any of those kind of things, is that inkjet is probably going to run when you wet it. My dad's in the room as well. We've got a whole family <laughs> affair. My dad is saying Hi, morning dad. girls. <laughs> I'm betting your dad's not on. No, <laughs> definitely not. Oh dear. Um, the inkjet ink is probably going to run because it is a liquid ink. So you could always give it a coating of something or you can just embrace the fact that it's going to run. Now what I've done is hit a halfway house between those two things and I've used this stuff. Again, I know this is very experimental today. I'm, the reason that I'm leaving you with this as a demonstration is so you've got plenty to research while I take a bit of a break from Technique Tuesday. This is an aerosol made by Schminka and it's called Universal Fixative. So you could use it for your pastels as well if you want to. I don't particularly use it for pastels. I use it for sealing in the surface of things that are going to run. So I took this outside in the garden yesterday, gave it a really good uh, spray with the universal fixative, allowed it to dry, and then hopefully it won't run quite so much as it did before. So I know a lot of um, process. I grant you it's a lot of process, but lots of things for you to go away and experiment with after today. When I printed it out onto my paper, I had a line drawing. Now, the line drawing of this particular photograph is also over on the blog as well. Tina will be thrilled to know that they can go over to the blog and they can download the photograph. <laughs> you should see the face that Tina is pulling just to one side. And I've done the line drawing for you too. Now, you can experiment with the line drawing on your printer. You could make her enormous if they wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could see her face, it's hilarious. Um, you can make her really small as well if you wanted to. So I've done that for you, again, so you can experiment with it. In terms of copyright for the line drawing and the photograph, I took the photograph, Tina is in the photograph, 
just over to this side of me. I've done the line drawing. If you want to share your painting on social media or exhibit it or turn it into greetings cards, any of that kind of thing, all that I ask you do is that you say from a tutorial by Alison Seaboard and then you're fine and dandy with all of those things, okay? So I did the line drawing <clears throat> and I transferred it onto the music manuscript. Now we do have a close-up camera. So let's get close-up camera in today. Shouldn't be a problem with the sound today. I fixed that from last week. I was telling Tina about how I blew all your eardrums with um, with the extra camera last week. Um, Jilly is asking, does Universal Fixative fix pastels too? Yes, it does. Absolutely and utterly. And here you can see I have drawn Tina out over the top of that music manuscript. Um, I haven't done a lot to her face because I don't do faces. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to, because my model is sitting to one side of me, it does make me very nervous, it has to be said. <laughs> I put all the right things in the right places. Um, and you could argue that it is quite confusing because I have used a black pen in amongst the music notation, but I quite like that because then it's quite tricky to see the difference between what is background and what is foreground. And of course, our job today is going to be to make Tina pop off the page. Isn't it, Tina? Yeah. <laughs> That's your job, not That's mine. my job. Oh, I was going to let you do it. I thought that would be much more fun to let you do it. So this is my starting point. I hope that's made sense. But of course, what you can do is watch uh, this on catch up. Uh, Lynn is saying, having problems with this, both picture and sound keeps jumping back a few seconds and repeating itself two or three times. Is it just me? If someone could answer Lynn as to whether that is just her or whether it's this end, I would be extremely grateful. I'm going to carry on regardless um, because I want to crack through this demonstration this morning. So I've got to this point, like I said, you can re wind it and watch it back if there is um, anything that you didn't quite understand or if you want to think of ways that you can interpret it yourself that would be good now I said to Tina the first thing I've got to do before I do anything this morning is put my glasses on so that I can see uh, Lynn uh, it looks like that uh, unfortunately I think it's down to your internet or your device I am sorry about that but hopefully in the recording, you'll be able to watch this back. It'll be annoying to watch it live, but in the recording, it will be OK. So the first thing I'm going to start with today is I'm going to give uh, Tina a little bit of a watercolour background to push this music manuscript back a little bit. And to do that, I'm going to use good old watercolour. So in my hand, I'm going to have a bit of uh, kitchen roll. I've got my water pot just out of shot. I have my size 10 SAA imitation sable brush and uh, I'm going to use a little bit of Daniel Smith Jane's Grey watercolour. A lot of you know this is a watercolour that is one of my favourites um, and uh, it's a, a very nice kind of uh, a colour that you can get all sorts of tonal values out so I can get a dark and a light out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll my brush into the colour. Just in case you've not seen me demonstrate before, I use tubed colour. So I will use a tube of colour and I will squeeze it out into an empty pan and allow it to dry so that uh, it's the right consistency when I start painting. And I'm going to give her a background. So I'm going to kind of work around her negatively. So I'm using my brush to fill in some of that space around her. And we'll use a blending out technique. So we'll wash the brush out. We'll control the amount of water on the brush and then we'll pull that colour across the piece of paper. Now this is the bamboo paper, but of course it has got the inkjet ink on top of it. So I'm not particularly um, able to predict how that's going to work. But hey, that's half of the fun. I'm also going to work it up section by section with a tiny bit of rag rolling in the background. Why am I doing that? I'm doing that so that we push this music manuscript back. You can see Tina's torso is starting to pop out now, but it fuzzes into the background. That's what we're going to do. So that was the easy section. <laughs> Start with the easy section. Mm -hmm. Now, Tina, 
while I am working my way around this, would you like to tell the people uh, who are watching at home a little bit about your professional career? When you had uh, finished uh, your junior training at Murilova, what did you do after that? Um, so after I finished at Murilova, well, actually, I never quite finished. I kept going back. <laughs> no one ever leaves. No, as Murilova <laughs> students usually do. But um, after I became 18, I went to university, I went to Digester University in Sussex, and I studied contemporary dance degree, where ballet was a part of that, but contemporary was the main focus. Um, I carried on with my ballet training and extra classes and everything else as well. Um, and after that, I one of my friends, Espey, encouraged me to audition for a company that she had danced with before. And I was lucky enough to get my first professional role. Um, so that was with Vienna Festival Ballet, where I started off doing corps de ballet and worked up to more principal roles. And what were some of the roles that you uh, were lucky enough to take on when you were a professional? Um, so I ended up dancing with a number of different companies um, and ended up with Independent Ballet Wales, as they were called at the time. Um, and I, so I was lucky enough to do real traditional ballets, the ones that everyone knows. So Nutcracker, Sleeping Beauty, Coppelia, Swan Lake, things like that. But also, especially towards the end of my um, dancing career, I sort of dabbled more with the contemporary ballet style, which I ended up really loving. Um, so those roles won't be so recognisable, but from the classics, oh, you know this one, Ali, Lilac Fairy. <laughs> Lilac I don't know what Fairy. you're alluding to. <laughs> um, Aurora, I did, yeah, I danced a lot of different things during that time. Sugar Plum was one of my first principal roles. It was a killer to start with, <laughs> but it was a great learning curve as well. So, yeah, so I, I think I've been very fortunate with a nice long dancing career. So um, in terms of a long dancing career, what would you say is a long dancing career for a professional in a company? Because that might be a bit of information that shocks some people that are watching <laughs> today. Well, it, I think it largely depends on you as a person and the company that you're in particularly um, with regards to how well they look after you and give you physio and all this extra stuff that, of course, gives you a bit more longevity. Um, but for me, I danced for about 10 years. Right, so how old were you when you decided to give up professional touring? I was about 30. So that is not, in the grand scheme of careers, that is not <laughs> exactly deemed to be a long time. And no. What tends to happen to professionals when they have finished in company? What do they usually end up going and doing? Oh gosh, anything nowadays. Yeah. It's so easy to retrain and be something completely different. Um, I'm lucky that I've still stayed within the industry teaching. Um, but yeah. Anything goes now, I think. Yeah, a lot of um, professionals do a lot of business degrees, don't they? Yeah. And, and go back to university and, and like you say, retrain. And yeah. we are very lucky. I mean, in the UK particularly, we're very lucky that we have an education system that you can re-enter at any time yeah. in your life. I mean, I'm living testimony to that, having done my degree at, well, I graduated age 39. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it is... It's not um, the kind of the end of your life no. anymore. No. And actually... Um, uh, whilst I don't wish to get political at all, but we do have a discussion in this country at the moment about the importance of the arts. Um, well, how would you say and how do you encourage uh, students that their creativity and their ballet is very important in the big wide world, not just in ballet terms, mm. but in other industries too? What would you say? Well, yeah, totally. I mean, there are so many transferable skills doing... Um creative dance or whatever it may be, singing, acting, you know, anything in the arts is so transferable. All those skills you need for other jobs, um, other parts of your life even. Um, I just think it's one of those things that you love doing what you do and knowing that you, as long as you've got your head screwed on and know that you can retrain later on, it's one of those jobs you can't retrain for later as a dancer. You've no. got to do it then. Do it now. Now. And, and then don't regret it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't want to miss your time. No, you don't want to miss your time because it is a, a really precious time and it's something that you will uh, look back on with... Um, 
quite a lot of fondness, isn't it? I know Absolutely. I look back on my time, but also I know that there is no way that I could be doing this broadcasting, talking to people, uh, demonstrating, standing up in front of rooms full of people and telling them about what I do without them, without my ballet training. It's just, just a given, really. So um, I definitely think that it gives uh, children a lot of confidence, doesn't it? It certainly gave me yes. confidence um, when I was a kid to not only to stand up and speak to people but also to have the courage of my convictions as well if i wanted yeah. to do something then then that's what i would going to do uh, so uh lots of people have uh, saying that uh, tina is starting to pop off the paper which is oh, always good wow, news thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to do anything either did you <laughs> Um, Lynn has said, uh, Tina, does your body suffer from your 10 years dancing? <laughs> well, I don't know because I don't know what it's like. I haven't been dancing. <laughs> Nothing to compare it to. <laughs> no, I've been very lucky, really. I mean, I get the odd ache and things when I get up in the morning, but who doesn't? Forty. <laughs> I was going to say, that's your two children. That's yeah. got nothing to do with your balance. Oh dear. No, I've been very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question um people having uh, issues with their tech which is uh, and Anne is saying it looks amazing already thank you very much it's a joint effort this morning so what I've done is I've given Tina this bit of a halo in the background because like I said I wanted to sort of emerge from that music manuscript and it's not that I've blocked it out completely what I've done is uh, fuzz out the edges make it into that nice kind of vignette you probably saw I was applying my colour then using the water to pull it away. So uh, what's happening in the background is starting to blend into what's happening in the foreground, okay? Now what I want to do is to really, really push this forward a little bit more. So let's put it over to one side, sorry about that. And uh, let's get the palette involved because the first thing I want to do, and admittedly, I'm probably gonna be painting this out of sync today just because it's experimental and I don't really know where I'm going myself. And I'm gonna pop some white gouache onto my palette. If you've not used gouache before, this is a much more opaque version of watercolor. And so it is going to cover over some areas, but where Tina's got a white tutu, I'm gonna change the appearance of some of the rest of her from the photograph, but I want those white layers of net to really shine out. So I think actually what I'm also going to do is switch to a slightly smaller brush. So this is a size six imitation sable. I think I'm going to change my bit of kitchen roll as well because that, that's a pathetic looking thing, isn't it? So let's change to uh, a bigger bit and we'll start to get that tutu in. Now, actually, probably should, I was going to ask you the next question, but probably your mum and my mum would be able to answer oh. this question uh, much more uh, conclusively. Tell us about costumes, Tina, because I know that there are going to be people out there that are interested in a tutu and what it's comprised of and what makes a good tutu and a bad tutu, all of those kind of things. Oh, gosh. Right. Okay. What so makes a bad tutu? Because that's probably tutu. easier. A floppy one. A no floppy one tutu. Likes a floppy tutu. <laughs> <laughs> Best sentence ever. <laughs> so a tutu is made up of some sort of knickers inside to keep it all in the right place. And then you've got a basque, which is a, I don't know what it's made out of, but it's a, <laughs> a stiff piece of material. That if my mum is still hips. in the chat, she needs to pop up <laughs> like, right now. Let's help me out here. <laughs> and then basically the tutu skirt is layers and layers and layers of tulle and net to keep it sort of stiff. Um, but still bouncy so that you can get some movement out of it and it's not going to rip your partner's skin off <laughs> as it brushes past him or her but um, yeah so that it keeps that nice traditional shape yeah because it is it is quite coarse isn't it yeah having had be. many tutus flying past me in the past Absolutely. yeah it can it can be quite stiff can't yeah. it so yeah so I'm using I'm trying to use the white gouache to kind of simulate that really to get that layer of net in and, uh, and also to make it a little bit more opaque than um, the rest of Tina. Mm. <laughs> Although we'll do that. Um, sometimes um, tutus have a hoop in them, don't they? Oh, is that my mum? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Two twos, we've made a few Elaine, yes. <laughs> She's not alluding more than that. Um, sometimes they have a hoop in them, don't they? They have a hoop that goes all the way around the edge to um, keep them in place, to stop them coming yeah, in and going do, out. depending on the type of ballet. I mean, now they do square ones as well. I've seen yes. in some ballets square Have tutus. you seen the Alice in Wonderland two twos yeah. that are all shaped like the pack of cards? It's so amazing. It is amazing, isn't it? I don't it? know how they get that to hold that shape. No, quite, quite incredible. So, the, I mean, the materials and things that they use now have come on so far yeah that yeah. makes us sound like we're 100 I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant um and uh what was your favorite tutu what um part did you have where when you put the tutu on you thought oh i like this this is good um okay. i'm guessing not swan lake <laughs> no not really i mean i think just because it was my first main role, the Sugar Plum Fairy. I mean, that's sort of a classic, isn't it? Yeah. It's sugary pink with lots of sparkly bits and yeah. <laughs> embroidery and, and sleeves and yeah. the tiara. It was just the whole thing, you know, for that one. It's a fair, you know, if, if that's what you've grown up being inspired by and being inspired by ballerinas who do Sugar Plum Fairy, because it's such an iconic role, yeah. you can't wait to get your Sugar Plum Fairy <laughs> tutu on, can you? No, I mean, that's just, uh, that's just the highlight of your career, really, yeah. isn't it? So um, so I've got those layers of white net in. I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything more to that or not, but, but that's the first layer. Um, I need to address Tina's face and her arms. Um, I'm going to do that uh, with some pen in a little bit. I, I, kind, I want you to be ethereal, my lovely. Lovely, go for it. <laughs> Because if, if I'm honest, I don't want to be painting much of your face because I'm not a no. portrait artist, not because I don't love your face. Well. Just, you know. <laughs> um, and I have uh, some more gouache here. And I'm going to give you the choice oh. today. We have two colours here. Um, we've gone for, <laughs> unsurprisingly, Spectrum Violet. Really? And I've got <laughs> Process Magenta as well. So you can choose which of the two colours. And you choose. You want to make your um, the, the main body of your costume. Oh, oh, well, I'm going pink. You're going pink. Just As we were talking, you know just we were... <laughs> <laughs> it's like she knows me. <laughs> so we've got a bit of process magenta going on, and I'm going to use this for her bodice. Now you've got actually got a leotard on in this yeah. photograph, haven't you? Yeah, I was going to say this is a practice tutu, so it's literally just the knickers with the tutu skirt on that you pull quickly over whatever you're wearing when you're rehearsing. Um, so normally a tutu has a bodice all sewn into the skirt and that can be made of all sorts of different beautiful things um, and embellished as necessary as well over the top. So yeah, so I've, I've actually kind of um, interpreted it quite literally in that I've put your cap sleeves on yeah. um, and I need to put that little sleeve in on the other side as well. But it doesn't matter, does it? The yep. um, There are, like you said, um, some costumes that do have sleeves on your tutu. It doesn't yep. always have to be bare arms. And some of the more contemporary ones have all sorts going on at the top, oh, yeah. don't they? Yeah, they do. Um, I saw a beautiful tutu the other day with um, like those sort of, I don't know how to describe them, like puff sleeves that came to the wrist. Mm. Really lovely. Yeah, that can be nice, especially if they haven't got any... Um thing on their bottom half so yes yeah it really accentuates the difference in the legs and the arms legs, legs and the arms yeah, yeah very much really so nice so uh the design of the tutu although fabrics have improved um and the mechanics of making them has yeah. improved but the actual design of them hasn't changed much has it for hundreds of years no not really other than the boning that they used to use real stiff bones so the dancer couldn't move their body at all and yeah i've just... had one of those okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, quite uncomfortable by nowadays standards. I mean, all these tutus are really quite comfortable. Yeah. They don't have much stretch in them, but they do allow the dancer to use all of their back and all of their body now, which yeah. is more so in keeping with how dancers dance nowadays. My boned tutu was for Lilac Fairy, actually, and one of the best things it did was hold me up. <laughs> <laughs> when Where that's such a long roll, and by Act 3, you're kind of wilting a little bit. I bet you couldn't breathe, though. <laughs> 
<laughs> I breathe lightly. <laughs> so we have a uh, pink bodice in for Tina, which um, is making her really pop over the background. Now, if I want to make that a little bit more opaque, what I can do is take some of the white gouache. So this is permanent white gouache. This is the whiter of all the whites. Um, Lynn is saying, I imagine the costumes are quite expensive. Yeah, they can be, can't they? Yeah, I seem definitely. to remember my poor parents having to uh, shell out an awful lot of money for fabrics and things, um, for which I'm always very grateful because I always had look. Because your mum made your costumes, didn't she? Yes. And yeah. my mum made my costumes, and you have no idea what a difference that makes. Yeah. Does it to be able to alter the tiniest of things? I'm sure yeah. my mum wanted to murder me on various occasions. Did your mum ever want to murder you? Oh, I expect so. She does. <laughs> still does she makes all the costumes for the school now she so does yeah she's carried on she has <laughs> i'd love to know what my mum thinks about having to carry on making costumes <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> so i've mixed a little bit of the permanent white gouache in with the process magenta so that we can give you a few little white highlights here and there to make you really pop out from the background in actual fact what i'll do let's put you in a close-up camera so you can see those little additions that I'm making and you can see the net in a bit more close up too. Oh, Brenda, thank you. Brenda is saying loving the painting and the chat. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we could probably chat for a long time. <laughs> you and me. Um, let's add a little bit more of that pink down at the bottom just to deepen where the tutu comes to the bars. Now this is a very loose impressionistic type of ballerina. This isn't done with any kind of detail or clarity at all. It's to kind of get the essence of Tina. <laughs> Did you know that was what we were doing this morning? I'm intrigued. Are you? You're <laughs> yeah. leaning in much closer I'm than sorry. you were. I, no, 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 no. <laughs> Putting you off. No, you're not. Oh, please believe me, you are not putting me off. Um, what does make me laugh is you sat right back, and now I've started painting in earnest. You've gone. Ooh. Ooh, it's fascinating. Now you, you can uh, let the others in on a bit of, se of a secret. Not only have I done your ballet classes in the past, but you have done my art classes in the past as well, haven't I you? I have done a couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all for fun. They were great fun, actually. Um, we did have uh, one weekend, didn't we? You and pretty much the entirety of your family. <laughs> <laughs> we painted chickens. <laughs> we did paint chickens. <laughs> yes, we certainly did. And uh, it was all taken terribly seriously, not. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe a little bit of competition in there. <laughs> a little bit? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I don't know that you'll meet a more competitive family, if I'm honest. Okay, um, already I'm going to give this a little bit of a spatter, just on the edges to give it that kind of sense of movement and a bit of freedom, those kind of things. So we kind of trying to give it that fluffy quality too. So what I've done um, is uh, mix up the paint to a milky kind of consistency, single cream kind of consistency, and I'm tapping it over the top of my pen to give it that little spatter on the edges. Uh, <laughs> Mum says she's still loving the sewing though. She just doesn't want to make costumes for me anymore. <laughs> Maybe me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'd do it for you. I know she did. For you. Okay, let's uh, take you back into the overhead shot so you can uh, see how far we've got. Now, um, I don't want to make, uh, we've chatted in the past, haven't we, about the difference between good paintings of ballet dancers, ballet shoes, feet, etc., oh. and really not good paintings, um, uh, etc. And it's hard to not be critical isn't it but when you do know how a ballerina should stand and you do know the um the way that a foot should turn out and i know that some of you guys out there have seen me demonstrate dances before and talk at length about how point shoes are constructed a lot of you have seen my um old pair of point shoes i've shown them to you um what would you say in painting terms do people usually get wrong in dancers I, I was thinking about this earlier, actually, because I knew that you'd ask me this. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's it's partly to do with technique. So um, knowing the correct technique of the dancer. Yeah. But also it's about the weight distribution. So as a dancer, you know where your weight would be placed to be able to do that To be that able to do position. the thing, yeah. 
and often that's not captured in whatever it is they're trying to do. Yeah, so the danger with this sort of pose is where you are lunging forward on that front leg that somebody might put this leg too high off the ground yeah. or um, not throw the body weight far enough yeah, forward, definitely. all of those kind of things. So it is about, it's not just about understanding what a ballet dancer looks like. Like Tina said, it's about understanding that movement. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing for me in a ballet pose, exactly like I did, this well this isn't a particularly a balletic pose it is just somebody standing there it's also about trying to get some of the atmosphere involved in it as well that you know um getting a bit of light into it trying to get that sort of drama i mean dancers are dramatic entities aren't they you that's what you deal with all the time is portraying a character if you make a dancer look too static that really doesn't get across the essence of what the art is all about. But I mean, that's that's my interpretation of it. That's why um, drawings such as Degas, pastels of dancers are so good mm -hmm. because they inject them with this kind of uh, the atmosphere and the sense of performance and all of those kind of things. Right. Um, we're not going to do too much else to this. Obviously, I'm going to give you a, a, a sort of an element of a face. Thanks. <laughs> Um, but I do want to sort your arms out and your legs out and possibly your feet out. We'll see how much time we have. For this, I'm going to be using a Posca pen. So you've seen me demonstrate these a lot recently. These are the water soluble when they're wet, waterproof when they are dry uh permanent markers this is in uh, this is called beige this is the uh 1.3 size so it's kind of got the bullet tip to it and the reason it's going to work so well over the top of this is it's going to get rid of some of that music manuscript whilst giving tina a slightly more healthy appearance <laughs> I think that is. Um, again, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to start counting fingernails or any of that kind of stuff. I just want to uh, block out some of that colour. You could do it with a bit of gouache if you wanted to. I just personally prefer the Posca pens. Probably going to need to give that a couple of layers. Let's get rid of that little bit of music stave as well. Actually, that although it's a little bit on the yellow side, I quite like that bit of your arm. Let's keep that bit in. We'll give you uh, a more healthy looking wrist coming in. And then, now, do you want black legs or do you want flesh coloured legs? Flesh. Flesh coloured please. legs. So let's get rid of some of these. Actually, let's. Um, it's, it's probably. Oh, there we go. I thought it was starting to run out, but clearly not. There we go. That's better. Pen's running. I think it's got a bit dry under the lights. So we'll get rid of some. I'm trying very hard to not make your legs too fat. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Uh, it's really quite tricky to, to not do that um, you could do much greater in-depth version than I'm doing all I'm trying to do is uh, to get Tina's uh, legs to pop out over the manuscript so we'll give it a bit of colour we need to give them some shadow as well which we will put in in just a second and get that in again it's just to kind of bring you out and off the page a little bit uh, what colour hair do you want? <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> can have anything you like. <laughs> Whatever you think. Do you suits. have? <laughs> do you have a desire to all of a sudden be a particular hair color? No. Okay. Whatever you think. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to leave. I did this uh, original sketching in a waterproof pen. Let's get you in close up camera again. Um, and uh, so all I'm going to do is take uh, back some of that music manuscript just to cover it over a little bit. But like I said, not a big uh, face drawer. So we're going to concentrate on the rest of you. Um, but we do need to give you a hair colour, which I haven't fished out. Could you do me... <laughs> Sorry, I've turned you into my assistant. Right. In there. Would you mind just opening that up for me? Sounds very dramatic, doesn't it? Hair colour. That colour. God, my kids would love this bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put it into shot because they won't know they won't know at home what you're talking about. So yes, my bag of Posca pens. <laughs> Tina has just uh, opened up to one side. I'm going to give you. I know you are a blonde, but I'm going to give you slightly darker hair today. <laughs> uh, we'll give you a little bit of a bun at the back as well, and getting that colour in. 
Now I was going to give you a bit of a tiara as well because you got your hair up um, mm -hmm. in the photo and you've got your fringe up but I thought I'd give you a little bit of a pink tiara to go with it. So let's give you a little kind of crown going in mm -hmm. over the top. Let's get that in close up camera actually. There you are. There you are. I need to get rid of that music note don't I because it does look like you're smoking a pipe. <laughs> Not that times. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get let's just get get rid of that bit. That's a bit better, isn't it? Kind of look a bit more human. I'm not loving your nose either, so we'll get rid of that. We might put some um, other elements in uh, on another day, and we might make more of the face. But we definitely need to get uh, some shading in. But first, I need to give it a dry. So um, I didn't warn Tina about this, that we have the magic drying tool, um, which uh, unfortunately they can still hear me over the top of, okay. which is hence the reason for it. Oh, okay. So no swearing while this is on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you want to get your questions in for Tina or myself, now is the time to do it. Stick them in that Facebook chat because uh, we've only got about 10, 15 minutes left of the demonstration. So if you have a burning question about ballet or performing or some sort of role that you think Tina might um, have done or be interested in, stick it in the comments and hopefully we will see them come up. So I'm giving that a bit of a dry. I'm going to dry it on the back as well, very briefly. Making it very warm in here, that, isn't it? Okay, let's get that in. And let's uh, give it a bit of a run around so that it dries nice and flat. I've just stuck my... This is me all over, look. This is why I'm not allowed to be let out. Oh. Stuck my hand in the paint. Ah, oh, dear. Righty-ho. Now, I'm going to put some shading on her. And uh, for that, I'm going to go back to the uh, James Gray and put that in. Ali D is asking, who is your favourite royal ballet principal, Tina? Well, Past or present? Oh, yes, I, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stephen McGray. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's just come out of injury, so I'm very excited yeah, about that. Yeah, he's doing really well, actually. He is, actually. That's a, a prime case of somebody who got really well looked after. Oh, gosh, yeah. He's done loads of things on, on Facebook and stuff, hasn't yeah. he, about his rehabilitation. Yeah, amazing. He's looking so fit. I mean... Not how that... Right, that's really bad. <laughs> Fit in yeah. the physical... I was going to know that's the most of the Yeah, in all senses of the word. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. There are so many different people, and there's people coming through all the time. Yeah. Um, I do like Miss Nunez. Yeah, what's not... I, I set um, the adult ballet, their homework last night, mm. and I told them to go and watch her because of her how she holds her line. Mm. It's just beautiful, isn't it? I think she's really athletic as well. <laughs> so I'm just pointing to Ali's reply. Vadim. That is uh, Ali's uh, little heartthrob as well. Oh, so, it? yes. Oh. yeah. I mean, he is, he is stunning. Absolutely stunning. I think some of the younger company coming through as well yeah. uh, look rather good. Um Matthew Ball is another favourite of mine. Um, but some of the um, character artists as well, so Gary Avis and people who are carrying on the mm. tradition of it, because it's yeah. really important, isn't it? As much as Absolutely. you want new talent, you've got to have the tradition there too. But, yeah, you're right. that um, they're, they're, You like them for different things, yeah. don't you? Absolutely. Different roles or because some of them do comedy really well or some of them do tragedy really well. Yeah. It, it's all of those things, isn't it? My mum is saying Anthony Dell. That was my <laughs> mum's favourite. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, incredible dancer. The amount you learn as somebody in a company from the older dancers yeah. is absolutely incredible. That's probably the most valuable things that you get from working with people that have been in the business a while. Yeah, and I think that is definitely something that we try to do with Mural Over as well, yeah. isn't it? And I, I know you do, that that sort of sense of um, history being passed on and the way a role is interpreted or the way that music is interpreted, those things yeah. you you can't just learn, can you? You have yeah. to absorb those. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, it is um, it's interesting to see... So getting those shadows in so that this arm comes forwards and we'll get a bit of a shadow in over here on this arm. 
so that that front arm comes forwards and then we'll attack your shoes I think just oh I tell, I tell you what it does need it needs a little bit of shading on your tutu as well let's put some little extra lines in or shading on there so you get those sorts of layers of net now if you are following this along uh, at home you will do a much better job of it than me i'm doing it under incredibly unusual circumstances this morning oh my dad has said uh, leslie collier mm -hmm. Um, who I had the great fortune of meeting uh, not that long ago. Uh, just, yes, back um, at Stage Door. And oh. she's just the nicest person. Mm. Because um, Leslie Collier is a, a dancer um, from the 60s, 70s, 80s era. And uh, just very beautiful and very English dancer. So she interpreted that style of uh, dancing really well. And I went up to her backstage and asked her for her autograph. And she said, oh, you don't want my autograph. And I went, oh, no, I really do. <laughs> she was just so self-effacing. You know, it was, um, it was joyful. Um, I'm going to give you pink ballet shoes. Thank you. It's all right. <laughs> Uh, and we're going to give you just a sort of essence of ballet shoe. So we're going to put them in as if they they kind of exist uh, just in there. So um, this is a kind of, what ballet would you be doing if you had matching shoes to your tutu? That could be Alice in Wonderland, couldn't it? It could be anything, really. Yeah. Any of those. Now, you've got uh, leggings on in the photograph, but what we'll do is we'll extend your shoe up your leg a little bit mm -hmm. like i love that i love that you're going uh-huh mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's the most normal thing in the world it's your ribbons it's me ribbons <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then we've got your foot over here which is very turned out so it's you've got a bit of foreshortening going on here so your heel is uh pointing so your heel is closer to uh, us than your toe is so we'll get the emphasis on the heel of your shoe We'll get a little bit of colour up for the ribbons and then we won't really do an awful lot more to this. In fact, I'm not going to particularly do an awful lot more to this at all because I really wanted today to be about the kind of the essence. I was going to say the essence of you, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, that kind of uh, fleeting moment. I sort of wanted it to look like you kind of run into the page, thrown a shape, and As we're I about do. to. Re yeah, and that is not far. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> all over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really, really is. Uh, so uh, there. Um, is the semi-completed uh, watercolour sketch of Tina. Now, don't disappear on me. Uh, Tina needs to creep back into shot again so that we can see your lovely face. Um, because I have a little bit of uh, news for you before we say uh, thank you to Tina and uh, we say our goodbyes. So, yes, I am disappearing just for a little bit, but uh, simply because I've got a painting holiday, which starts on Thursday, and then I've got some uh, big, big projects coming up, which I need to spend a little bit of time planning. So Technique Tuesday will be back on the 13th of July. Now, any of the links to anything that I've talked about, the My Porch Prints, uh, the Etsy shop, you can find over on my blog but I tell you what is more important than anything today is that you find Muriel Over Ballet School on Facebook and you do the social media thing and you give it a follow and a like you'll be able to hear much more from Tina you'll be able to see all the things that we get up to in the school we've got a show coming up very soon yeah. haven't we do you want to yeah. tell them about the show that we've got um, so oh fingers crossed it all happens because after last year it didn't but anyway this year hopefully at the end of each year we do an annual end of term display so this is a chance for the school to get together with their family and just um, share in what they've been doing for the past term and via zoom with Ali as well um so yeah it's just an appreciation of what everyone's been up to this year really and we do a little end of term prize giving as well so they get some certificates and a few trophies to be given out as well and so, the, the trophies have quite a historical significance don't they, they as do as we were sharing this week because we realized that one of the trophies has both my name and your name yeah. on it and that made us feel quite old it has to be said um and uh, but these certificates are really important this year aren't they they are they are a special certificate for those people who managed to carry on all through this pandemic via zoom with their lessons with ali <laughs> um i mean yeah their dedication was amazing yeah. 
yeah it was absolutely really impressive and they've come back so full of enthusiasm so yeah it's a little well done to yeah, those people absolutely really important and important for their families to see as yeah. well because we've had to have a closed shop haven't we through yeah. all of the restrictions so the parents haven't necessarily seen what their children no, or no. grandchildren or, or whoever it is has been able to get up to yeah. so yeah it's going to be uh, quite a historic one for yeah. uh, for you this year I think yeah. so yes yeah, so pop over and uh, give Muriel over Ballet School a uh, a follow so Murilova is spelt M-U-R-I-L-O-V-A. There is a link both in this post and on the blog. Um, give Tina a follow because it's her that does it and um, she would very much appreciate it because we're trying to work on expanding the school a little bit, we aren't we? So, yes. yes well, that would be much Jeez. appreciated. Mm -hmm. Right, let's just say um, a few hellos, goodbyes and, and all the rest of it before we go. Lots of people um, saying they enjoyed the chat this morning. Lots of people saying thank you. Uh, lots of people um, asking Ali D who Vadim Montagiroff is. So uh, we'll leave that <laughs> to sort out. Out. Um, yes, pop over to my blog um, for all of those links, uh, for all of that information. And don't forget, if you do your own version of Tina or you do your own version of a ballet dancer, then stick it on the Learning to Paint with Alison Seaboard Facebook page. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll tag this one in to it and she can see all the creations that you have come up with. So it only remains uh, for me to say thank you very much for joining this morning. Oh. I did have to hold her arm behind her back to get her to do it. She was very concerned that she would have nothing to say, which is so not true. You could stick us in a vacuum and we'd still find things to talk about. We've known each other for so long. Um, so a huge thanks uh, to Tina. An enormous thank you to all of you for tuning in. I will still be around on social media. There's plenty that I have to share with you. But I'm going to come back on the 13th of July with lots of new ideas for you. Lots of big news for you, hopefully. But until then, please, all of you, take lots and lots of care. Continue to look after each other as well. Keep working through the restrictions that we currently have. Stay very safe, won't you? Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>